Hello and welcome to Epiphytic Cacti. Today, let's take a look at Phyphora boliviana. Now, you may have this plant in your collection as Lepismium boliviana or Lepismium boliviana. It's been through a few taxonomic changes over the years, but phylogenetic studies have placed it in Phyphora. And if you want proof that it belongs in Phyphora, if we take a look at different Phyphora species berries compared to different Lepismium berries, there is a clear indicator that that is true. I always say this, but don't ignore your ovaries. Your flower ovaries can tell you so much about the identification of your plant. The study showed that its closest relative was actually Phyphora perengianensis. If you go to iucnredlist.org and you look this species up, you will find no real information on it. It says that it's data deficient. However, there is an article that contains some information about this species. It's Ecology, Biogeography, and Diversity of the Bolivian Epiphytic Cacti with the description of two new taxa. It was published in 2000. And the authors are P.L. Ibish, M. Kessler, C. Nowicki, and Wilhelm Barthlot. It was published in Bradlia, issue 18, pages 2 through 30. It was published by the British and Cactus Succulent Society. You can purchase this article from BioOne. I will put a link in the description. It says that Phyphora boliviana is endemic to Bolivia, obviously hence the name. It's found only in the montane rainforests of the Yungas. At altitude ranges of 1,050 to 2,100 meters. It does talk a little bit about how variable the flower colors are within the populations. It's a little bit crazy because even if you go on Facebook or the internet or wherever and you happen to look this species up, you may find flower colors with a lot of variability. I have seen flowers that are white. Sometimes flowers that are white tinted with yellow. Sometimes flowers that are predominantly yellow, sometimes white, yellow, and orange, sometimes yellow and orange, sometimes pink and orange, sometimes pink, all the way to red. <laughs> so this has an extreme level of variability, probably the most that I've ever seen in any epiphytic cacti. And what's very interesting is to directly quote this in the notes, it says a little known endemic with marked morphological variation between populations. Additional studies, especially of the variability within natural populations, may reveal that some forms merit recognition as subspecies or varieties. What's interesting about that is that in 2010 in Najakorik Kova's dissertation, there were two different specimens that were sampled in the phylogenetic testing, and it showed that these two different samples probably aren't the same species. And not even different subspecies or different forms, literally probably not even the same species. So I would expect that at some point there is probably going to be some kind of taxonomic changes in Phyphora boliviana. From the pictures, the two specimen that were sampled, one of them has white, yellow, orangish, reddish flowers, and the other one has more of like a white, yellow, pinkish, magenta sort of flower color. If you look around, even in cultivation, like if you look at photos on Facebook or on the internet, you'll find variations within kind of those major color groups. So the major color group being more on the yellow orange side or being more on this kind of pink magenta side. And you'll find that there are some that are lighter in color, some that are darker in color. And that can be attributed to a few different things. It can be attributed just to cultivation. So how much water they're getting, how much light they're getting, the temperature, how much nutrients they're getting, that kind of thing. But it could also be attributed to just clonal variations. So you may have one clone that is producing a lot more abetalins than another clone. And so one might be considerably more yellow, considerably more orange, considerably more magenta, considerably more red. The flowering period for me is June, July, August. If you live closer to the equator, it may bloom a month or two earlier than that. I don't really find that there's any special care or anything that is needed for flowering. 
it just kind of naturally flowers at that time. The only thing that I've ever noticed was maybe to get a little bit of maturity on it. But that's that's really with most plants. They need to establish a little bit before they want to start thinking about reproducing. It's not that much different from humans, really. <laughs> I do find growing this plant to be kind of difficult, though. And I think that most people kind of experience this, where there's a, a lot of icky dieback, particularly around the basil part of the branches near the soil line and a lot of times that keeps on and keeps on and keeps on working its way up and the plant can get very very unsightly. I really have not solved that mystery. I do know that I've seen other people grow this absolutely beautifully without any of those kinds of issues. That leads me to believe that it's an environmental cause not necessarily like a a cultivation cause. It might be that the environment is too cold or too wet or too dry or something like that. But in my case, I've just not been able to quite figure it out. And I moved the plant around a lot and kind of tested things out a lot with it and still just have not quite been able to figure that out. So what I do when I see that is depending on how unsightly it is, I just keep cutting it, cutting it, restarting it, restarting it and, and trying to deal with it that way. It's quite common that I read about epiphytic cacti from Bolivia being harder to keep in cultivation just in general. Like I have noticed that with some of the Ripsalis and stuff too, that they wanted to be a little bit on the, a little bit more on the damp side and a little bit on the warmer side. According to climatedata.org, one specific kind of area where it was collected in or collected near the temperature ranges is somewhere between 75 degrees Fahrenheit down to about 65 degrees Fahrenheit. And it again, it's very mild. It's very consistent. And then the average sort of rainfall is in the rainy season, it looks like it's between, I would say, 20 and 30 inches. And then in the non-rainy season, it looks like it's between about 5 and 15 inches, driest in about August, September. If you can get it to grow well, it's beautiful and it has these indeterminate branches so they get super long or they can get super long and sometimes they're a little bit shorter, but it also produces branches sort of off of the tips towards the middle of the previous branches. So it just kind of keeps cascading down and it will just get long and absolutely beautiful and can be a super prolific bloomer. One of the things that I want to point out about the flowers here, because I thought it was really interesting when I saw them, is that the base of this particular specimen, the base of the stamen was yellow and then it kind of faded up to white. And in the other specimen that was more magenta in color, the stamen were actually kind of a dark orange and faded up into kind of a lighter orange or a lighter yellow. I just thought that was really interesting because it's something that you see mirrored in some of the Ripsalis species as well as those kind of different colored stamens. So I just thought that was fascinating. In terms of where to purchase this plant, this, this plant is not rare or anything by any stretch of the imagination. I think that it's rare if you're trying to find it like in a big box store or nursery. It's probably not going to be there. You are going to have to do a, a little bit of work to get it. It's probably going to come from someplace like eBay or Etsy or Facebook. You might want to do an in-search of on Facebook for trades or whatever, especially when it comes to being able to very specifically get certain clones that are more magenta or more yellowish. It, it just kind of depends. The large plant that I bought, I did buy from Etsy in the United States from a seller called Homegrown Tropicals. I do highly recommend this seller. I have bought several plants from them. They have all been beautiful. They have all been extremely healthy. This one was no exception. And the prices may seem like they're higher to some people, but there is not a huge market in the United States where you can just go buy like huge epiphytic cacti. That's not really a thing here. And so this is probably a smaller sort of nursery 
that is not mass producing these for like big box store quantities. So there's not like a super low cost to these. They are going to cost a little bit more. There's obviously like that particular grower has to have all that space for all of them, et cetera, et cetera. So to me, it seemed like a fairly fair price. Outside of that, I've really only seen it for sale, I think probably on Etsy and only really small specimens, like either really small plants or cuttings of it. But I have seen multiple different clones on Etsy specifically. So I do know that there are like homegrown tropicals. You're going to end up with a one of the more like white yellow clones. But there are clones on Etsy that are more of a magenta color. I hope you've enjoyed looking at Pfeiffer Boliviana with me. Thank you for watching and as always, happy cacti growing.